Welcome to Combat Zone 360, where we discuss everything military. Today on our show, I'd like to welcome Sergeant First Class Fort with the AMED Recruiting Office out of New York City. Thanks for joining me today. You're welcome. No problem. Yes. What I want to do right now is I want to know where Sergeant Fort comes from. <laughs> yes. Well, well um, I was born and raised in Guyana, South America. Okay. You know, I, was, I came here when I was 13, um, went straight to Florida. You know, uh, my family and I, it was about eight of us, three brothers, no, uh, three sisters, I'm sorry, two brothers. And uh, we just try to try to make it, try to, you know, acclimate to the United States because, you know, you're the new kid on the block, you know. So, um, and, you know, it's been it's been good. Been here 28 years now, going on 29. Nice. So how hard was it coming from? Guyana into the United States down in Florida and I'm sure there's different cultures there. Well, there's a lot of Caribbean people in Florida. Okay. So it was a somewhat of a easy transition, mm -hmm. but at the same time you still that new kid on the block. Yeah. You have an accent. <laughs> you know, everyone everyone wants you to, you know, to talk so they can hear you. You know, because they're fascinated by that. But at the same time, you kind of feel out of place a little bit. So you're trying to cope with all of that. Yeah. You know, and try to find your way in and, 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 and fit in, you know? No, definitely. I know how it is. I mean, I grew up, my dad was a Marine, so yeah. I moved around constantly. And I was always the new kid wherever we went. <laughs> yeah. So I know exactly how that is. That's Going from the West Coast to the East Coast, having the Southern accent, having the <laughs> the New Jersey accent, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I know how it is. I was yeah. able to adapt wherever I went. Yes, so yes. I know how difficult that can be. Absolutely. Now, did you play any sports in high school? Actually, I did. You know, I'm, I'm actually short for my, you know, uh, and uh, but I played basketball. I found, I found a love for it. I got good at it, played in high school. You know, I had an opportunity where I could have walked on, you know, to the junior college. Mm -hmm. But I was working full time, so mm -hmm. I had to leave full time work and walk on and earn a scholarship. Okay. So it was like a, a decision I had to wrestle with. So in, in, in the end, I ended up keeping my full time job. No, in definitely. The, right, because I was paying for college at the time. So, yeah. You know, I didn't want to take that risk. You know, being a short guy and everything. You know. No, exactly. So, yeah. I mean, not everybody can be a Spud Webb. Exactly. You know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no. Now, a question that I have is mm -hmm. most Caribbeans, mm -hmm. when they come to the United States, mm -hmm. they their hearts in soccer. Correct. In, in football. Mm -hmm. You know, what made you decide to go basketball compared to soccer? Well, my first love is actually cricket. Okay. Um, but. Nowhere to be seen around here. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> my, my two older brothers, one loves soccer. Uh-huh. And the other one, he's a track and field. Okay. And I'm cricket. So cricket is like, as you mentioned, it's, n it's not here. Exactly. So the next best thing for me that I, I, I fell in love with was basketball. So that's why that's how I picked it up. And I, and I just ran with it. See, yeah. cricket, I, I would have figured you would have went baseball. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I didn't like baseball. I don't know why. I didn't like it. Really? I, I, like I, was, it. Always a, I was always scared of the ball. Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah. But I would rather get hit by a 250-pound man coming across the line <laughs> than a little hard ball yeah. going about 50 miles an hour yeah. towards me. Yeah. I, I don't rough. know. I don't know. <laughs> so when you graduated high school, yes. were you in any clubs at that time, or were you just straight sports? I, I was just straight sports. You okay. know, to me, that was my club. You know, I, I was never really into, like, fraternities and clubs and stuff mm -hmm. like that. You know, I, I felt part of the team being, you know, playing basketball and interacting with the players and stuff like that. So everything that came along with that, I enjoyed that. So you so, were in a nice team organization. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Nice. absolutely. Now, you went to college after you graduated high school. Yes, I did. And you were working a full-time job. Yes, I was. What turned you towards the military? What influenced you to join the Army after you were going to college? Um, one of the things that, I, you know, I experienced was, you know, is, is, I was working at uh, Publix so mm -hmm. like, as a stock, stockman. And there was a prior service guy or, or veteran there working with us. Okay. So I would talk to him about, you know, wanting to better myself, wanting to, you know, go back to college because I had stopped. 
So I wanted to find a way to pay for school, support a job at the same time, and I had two young kids. Uh, right. So I wanted to make sure that I can get something to facilitate all of that, one thing. Yeah. So that was my thing that forced me, to, not really forced me, but pointed me in the direction. And he would talk to me. He was like, listen, you need to join the Army. I'm like, okay, talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> he said, well, it can facilitate everything that you want to do. So, you know, I thought about it, you know, right out of high school. But, mm -hmm. you know, life happened. I have two little kids, and I didn't want to leave them, you know what I mean? It was like, okay, but you want to do your education? You want to have a good job? You know, I think this will be a good fit for you. So I joined the reserve. I actually wasn't recruited. Okay. I joined. So He, he told me, you know, what to ask for, you know, GI Bill, um, st student loan repayment, you know, a bonus, a specific job, mm -hmm. you know, which all entailed, you know, doing well, on the ASVAB. So that's what, you know, pointed me in the direction in the Army. And the funny thing is, the Army was not my, for, my first choice. Which was your first? Air Force. Air Force? Absolutely. And what pushed you towards the Army compared to the Air Force? Well, at the time, I was eligible to be a U.S. citizen, okay. but I did not apply for my citizenship as yet. So the Air Force, you have to already be a citizen before you can actually join. Gotcha. So I immediately started the applying for my citizenship, but I was ready to go. Yeah. So I said, you know what, Army, it's not that bad. Let me go do what I need to do because my life is not going to go into stop. Exactly, and you have two kids to and worry have, about. Correct, you know, you correct. have to get something going so you can correct. give them their best life. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So when you came into the Army, when was that? Uh, April of 2002. April 2002. But, okay, yeah. so you've been in for a minute. Absolutely. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> a little veteran. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> now, when you came in, yeah. you went to basic training. Yes. You went to your advanced individual training. How was that process for you? I was already 25 when okay. I joined. So, you know, um, it was under, I, I understood more. I understood what the drill sergeants were doing. Mm -hmm. So, um, it, and I had a good time because when I, because I understood what life was, you know, really about mm -hmm. at that time. So I knew they were trying to, you know, per se, read out, weed out the weak. But it's not really weed out the weak. We're trying to make sure that we have the best individual possible that can be in a job to help serve in the Army and help protect the nation. So I understood that's what they were doing mm -hmm. when they would wake us up early or they would put us in stressful situations. I understood that's what they were doing. AIT was fun. Um, <laughs> I went to San Antonio, okay, San Antonio, Texas, and that, that was good. That was good. I enjoyed the time. It reminded me a lot of Florida. It's actually one of the places I would, I would consider living other than Florida is San Antonio. You nice. know, so it, it, it had that much of an impact on me. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Now, when you joined, what was your job when you first came in? A dental hygienist. Okay, so right. you were in the medical field. Correct. Dental hygienist. Mm -hmm. And then how long did you do that until you moved on to recruiting? I did that until uh, 2011. Okay. Right, I was doing that. And now, was that active duty or That's all active reserve? duty, yes. That's okay, active. so everything was active duty. Correct. Well, I, I joined as reserve, mm -hmm. and I got mobilized. Okay. So I was able to stay on orders for about seven years as a reservist. Nice. Yes. We were doing, uh, as a, that's, a, that's the height of OEF, OIF. Yeah. So we were doing mobilization. I was at a mobilization site. Okay. So we were able to stay there for about seven years. And that whole time, like I said, was active duty. But right after that, I didn't go into recruiting uh, after that. I went into, uh, I got a job at the WTU. Mm-hmm. But this was even more specific. It was community based. Okay. Where we're taking care of the wounded, the wounded soldiers or the, or, or the hurt soldiers. All right. So OIF and OEF. Correct. What does that stand for for our viewers? So this OIF is Operation Enduring Freedom, okay. and OIF Operation Iraqi Freedom. Okay. Right. 
And then the other abbreviation you gave me for the Wounded Warriors, what was that one? That's the Community Base Wounded Warriors. Okay, but it was, it, you called it a W what? Oh, the Warrior Transition Unit. Okay, so Warrior. WT. WTU, correct. Okay, you for right. Warrior Transition Warrior. Unit. Yes, yes. All right, that way everybody knows what yes. we're talking about. Understood. We know, right? but we got to make sure everybody knows. Absolutely. All right, so... With you doing that, you were lucky enough as a reservist to be on full-time active duty for many years. Yes. What pushed you over towards the recruiting aspect of it? Well, my time came up where I couldn't be in that position anymore. Okay. So, And I um, actually applied for an active guard reserve position mm -hmm. as a reservist coming to f active duty full-time. Okay. You know, um, and will and, and will remain or can remain active duty do twenty doing twenty years and re receiving a retirement. So I applied for that, and they contacted me. They said, "Well, your your package has been approved. We have a job for you. How you feel about recruiting?" I said, "Sure." So they said, "Okay, we'll set everything up. You, you need to do this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. Or as you know, the documents that we send to you, make sure you get them back to us in a timely manner." And we'll get you scheduled for your uh, recruiting training. Okay. So, which you know took place. Nice. And how long have you been on recruiting duty? Uh, going on six years. Six years. Six years. And what jobs have you hold held while you were in recruiting? Well, I'm recruiting a regular, uh, what we call it, the Army Medical Department. You know, a recruiter, mm -hmm. medical recruiter. I'm also held a station commander as a, as a medical recruiter. Okay. So your whole six years has been in the AMED portion, which is the medical recruiting for the Army. Absolutely. Okay. How do you like it? I love it. You love it? I love it. You know, it gives me an opportunity, you know, to, to show, inform people. I like to say, you know, recruiting people, you know, or, 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 or recruiters, they can look at themselves as salesmen at times. Mm -hmm. But you, you got to get outside your box at times and look at yourself as, uh, you know, g giving information, informing people mm -hmm. of things that what they may not know that's available to them and how the Army can help facilitate their agenda for us financially or even service the country, you know, because there are incentives, there are benefits for physicians, nurses. Um, we, we, we look at health service administration officers. We look all the way up to thoracic surgeons. Yeah. You know. No, and I, I agree with you because I, I was in USAREC, mm -hmm. which is the recruiting portion of the Army, right. for nine years nice. before I retired. And I used to tell my recruiters that we're not salespeople. We don't go out and sell the Army. We don't go out and try to force people to join the Army. We're out there as counselors. We're out there as educators. We sit right. down with them. We educate these individuals about the Army right. and how the Army can help them with their life plan. Absolutely. And then the good thing about the United States Army military, it's a 100% volunteer-based military. You do not have to come out of high school or college and serve like a lot of countries do. Right. Right. You know, so right. that's one thing that people do not understand. There's countries out there that you have to serve two years before you can go off and do your civilian job. Correct. You Correct. know, so we are a lucky country to be a 100 percent volunteer, volunteer base. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you've been in recruiting for nine years. Yes. What was your toughest time in recruiting? <laughs> um. <laughs> I, w I, w I would say be learning it, okay. you know, learning and, and owning, owning your art. I mean, it take, what, what happens, you get, of course, you get uh, institutional training, mm -hmm. um, but you have to, you have to self-develop as well. You can't just sit back and wait to say, well, let me just go by the book. It tells me to do this, this, and this. Sure. Well, you have a personality. You need to implement that personality into the recruiting. You need, to, you need to own your art. You need to go home and study your stuff. You need to practice. Exactly. You know, because it's presentations that you're going to have to give. Yeah. You know, so you need to be able to do all of those things. And you can't just do all of those things with just the institutional training. You have to take time to self-develop. Exactly. So, so you have yeah. to be a master at your craft. Correct. So when you go out, you can educate the right way. Absolutely. So with... AMED recruiting, yes. medical recruiting. You're just recruiting officers? Yes. 
Okay. Strictly officers. Okay. And what jobs are you looking for when it comes to the medical recruiting? Just about all all the medical jobs, all the, all the medical professionals that's out there. Like, as I mentioned before, anywhere from a regular, what we say, health service administration officer will be human resources um, manager or something like that, right? Okay. All the way up to, like I said, I, met, I mentioned thoracic surgeon. Mm-hmm. You know, that's a seven-year residency. Mm. You know, in and all parts in between: general surgeon, psychiatrists, nurses, PAs, um, orthopedic surgeons, family practice physicians. All of them. All of them. Wow. You know. So, somebody with a human resource degree mm-hmm. can come in the medical field of the army as. A health mission part of it? Yes, it'll be. It'll be. There would be a health service administration officer. That's okay. that's right. That's an entry level position. Okay. As when they when when they get commissioned and they get to their unit, they have to now specialize into something else. Oh wow! Right. See, I didn't know that, and I've been in recruiting for nine years. Yeah. I didn't know. I thought it was strictly based on medical, and yeah. I did not know somebody with a human resource degree yeah. could go into that field. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah, there's opportunities. There's opportunities there. You know, uh, we were talking about you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. And that's why I'm here. I'm trying to shed a light on, you know, on, on what people don't know that's out there that's available to them so they can, you know, stop, you know, having this rigid thing about the Army. You know, yeah. it's just one way. You know, it's multidimensional. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. We have a lot of different cultures, yeah. a lot of different yeah. religions, yeah. a lot of different different types of people in the military. I mean, I enjoyed all 21 years that I was in. (laughs) I'm having a good time right now, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. So when you recruit these doctors, these individuals with the human resource degree, Mm -hmm. um, what type of incentives are they able to obtain through AMED medical recruiting? A lot lot of physicians... um, or even just brand new college graduate, they have student loans. Okay. They, they have, we also have programs that where you can get a monthly stipend. Wow. Okay. We have programs where we can pay you while you're in residency mm-hmm. and receive the monthly stipend. So we have student loan repayments up to two fifty. We have cash bonuses up to four hundred thousand dollars. Some wow. of these for some of these physicians. So it it depends on your educational background. Depends on what you specialize in, mm-hmm. as as a physician, or you know, even even a even even a PA. There is mm-hmm. you know substantial amount of incentive they can receive. Nurses, you know, all CRNAs, certified nurses, anesthetists. Yeah, you know, they're high demand right now. Wow. So, well, will you take me back as a doctor? Because I can go for four hundred thousand. Absolutely. <laughs> I don't have a degree yet, but no, well, you you have to go to school. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, there's, we, there's, I'm sure there's something that can be done. Yeah, I'll tell you, I never heard of a four hundred thousand dollar bonus. Yeah, That's absolutely. awesome. Yeah, or our oral maxillary or facial surgeon, mm-hmm. they will receive about four hundred thousand dollars sign on bonus to go active duty. Wow, with the army. Wow. Yeah. Now, do they have to go through the basic training and um, officer candidate school training and all that? What training do they have to do on the military side of the house after they join? Officers don't go to basic training. They go to the basic officer leadership course. Okay. And that's, that's, it's, uh, depends if it's active duty or if it's reserve. It's reserve is a six-week six week course. Three weeks online, the other three weeks is resident at San Antonio. Active duty, they would go through that course as well, but they go through prior to that, it's a direct commissioning course. Okay. Then they go to the basic officer leadership course, and then they get to go to their unit. So it's what we like to call the uh, sandals Mm -hmm. of basic training. (laughs) (laughs) So, so that's how that's how that would work for for officers. Okay, so they they get the four star hotels and get to relax and all that. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, we get drugged through the dirt. Absolutely. Okay. That's why we're the backbone. That's right, and that's (laughs) that's why they get to wear the bars and make all the decisions. Correct. (laughs) Correct. Correct. (laughs) Nice. So. When we go into a med recruiting, yes, I know every part of recruiting has has a quota 
that they have to reach for, right. reach out for. What would your quota be on a year basis? On a year basis, it depends on the amount of individuals that, or when I say individuals, recruiters in that office. Okay. So on a yearly basis, average, the, again, on the size, the location, and so forth, anyway, from, you would say, 22 to about 46, 47. And remember, we're talking about professionals. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, it's a, it, get, it, get, it becomes a little more difficult where you're trying to convince someone to who's already established himself, you know, to come and say, hey, this is what we have for you. Come and join us, join the Army, you know, and, and, and let's make something happen. Leave your career, leave your practice, leave what you yeah. have going on yeah. here. Yeah. Come join the Army yeah. and, you know, yeah. roll with us. Roll, yeah. Difficult. Difficult. Yes. Difficult, but we get it done. We get it done. We are we are optimistic about doing it. Um, I'm 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 energized. I'm energized because I think it can be done. And I think more people. The more information we get out there, I think more people would want to do it. Mm-hmm. You know, because we want the best. You know, we don't want just mediocre individuals just coming into the ranks. You know, we want the best and we want the brightest and we want to put them in the army. Yeah. Now, age limits. Yes. I know with regular recruiting in the Army, we have up to 35. They have to go to basic training before they're 35. Mm -hmm. But if there's an age waiver, it's up to 42. Correct. What's the difference for you guys? For us, it's 42. Okay. Right? And the age waiver can go, depends on the specialty, up Mm -hmm. to six months prior to your 62nd birthday. Okay. For example, a general surgeon or emergency medicine uh, doctor, right? Mm -hmm. There, there is a high demand for that. So if you come in, let's say you're 56, I need you. Yeah. You know, are we gonna get, we're going to get you a waiver. Yeah. Well, you don't need them. The Army needs The Army needs, needs <laughs> Correct. The Army needs you. Yeah. You know, the so soldiers need soldiers you. Soldiers need you. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So we'll, yes. we'll do our best to, to, you know, apply for that waiver. That's how it works. Nice. Yeah. And when they come in, do they have to fit a type of criteria when they come in because I know you have to have the height weight you have yes. to have mm-hmm. a type of physical stamina mm-hmm. all of that what is it for older doctors coming into the military well to the army the, the army physical fitness um, scale mm-hmm. it, it's it's all gender and age based okay yeah it, 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 it hasn't changed so you know the, the doctors they still have to follow those guidelines. You still have to meet the height and weight standard. You still have to, you know, be a, look 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 a certain way. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's not just based on looks. It's based on, you know, the the whole concept, the whole package. You know, your qualifications. You know, and and again, your your mental fitness and so forth. So it's a total it's a total um what we call a holistic concept. Yeah. You, know, you gotta you gotta fit the part. Okay. With medical students coming out of school, Mm -hmm. when do you start recruiting them? When do you start talking to them and educating them about becoming a doctor in the, in the army? What what we try to do, we try to get to our undergraduates, whether it's their freshmen or their seniors. Typically we would try to get in front of our seniors, Mm -hmm. right? Because they can start applying immediately Okay. For the scholarship, health, the health professional scholarship program, that scholarship pays for medical school. Wow. It also gives them a, a over $2,300 stipend, okay, monthly for 10 and a half months out of the year, right? There's also a 20 grand cash bonus taxable <laughs> that they can receive. So by the time they're done, with, and all of it takes care of medical school. Yeah. So by the time they're done, they'll also match into one of our residencies. Okay. Because right now, the big thing is out there, residency is hard to get into. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot more graduate medical students than there are residencies to, to, to fill. Yeah. So we have our own matching system. So, yeah. So, so it's, on top of them going through medical school, mm-hmm. doing everything, they'll come in residence with the Army? Yes. So they'll they'll have a slot. So that's a guaranteed residence. Yes. 
yes. compared to flipping a coin and hoping you get into some civilian hospital. Not to mention you're debt free. Yeah. <laughs> oh, trust me, I know That's, medical school can yes. be an arm and a leg. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I've, I've I've spoken to medical students. I've spoken to dental students. Some of them have student loans up to five hundred five hundred thousand dollars. Wow. Oh yeah. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. My house they need don't cost five hundred thousand dollar bonuses. <laughs> 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 yeah. So what advice do you give them when you're out there talking to them? How do you guide them down that path? Because I know it's difficult to guide a regular college student down that path. Mm -hmm. What's the biggest thing that draws them in? Uh, <laughs> well, the, the part to be debt free. Mm -hmm. That's one of the biggest things that draws them. And not only that, we, we present a, a competitive nature. Can you make the cut? You know, we're looking for the, brighter, the brightest and the best. Um, one of the things they need to do to prepare themselves is, is, is volunteer. They need to be competitive, grade point averages. Yeah. You know, all of those things matter. The MCAT scores, you know, um, getting letter of acceptance into, into, into medical school. So all of those things we bring to their attention, mm -hmm. what the qualifications are, what the requirements are, you know, because it's not just it's the army. I got to shoe in. No, no exactly. Everybody no. thinks they could just walk into no, the army. No, you cannot. You cannot just walk into the army. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, stay out of the law. It's it's real. You know, all of those things we present to them. Yeah. So when they graduate high, or when they graduate college, yeah. go through their residency. You know, they're debt free. Mm -hmm. What does their typical contract look coming into the Army? A, a typical contract would be, for example, it would be the greater of the two, for example, residency or medical school. Okay. So let's say your medical school, we pay for four years of that scholarship. Mm -hmm. You may take a, a, a residency or get matched into a residency for three years. Okay. Your service obligation will still be four years. That's how I word. Three, if you get a residency, general surgery, five years, mm -hmm. you will serve five years on, act, on active duty with the Army. Okay. Right? And you're getting paid. No, exactly. <laughs> I mean, you're getting paid you're getting as an paid. officer. Absolutely. Housing allowance, Absolutely. food. Where was the best place you were deployed? Uh, or, or stationed, so I should say. I would say when I was downtown Orlando. Yeah? <laughs> that was the, that was the, uh, the community-based warrior transition unit. I was with them. Okay. And, you know, it, 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 gave, me, it gave me pride when I was leaving that my unit, because I was a platoon sergeant. Yeah. And my unit, when, they did not want me to go. Yeah. You know, and they were like, wow, we just got you. You know, you've only been with us for a year, and you have to go. I said, I have to go. Got to go, got to go. Got to go. Yeah. So. If they wanted to get a hold of you, let's say there's a doctor sitting on his couch right now saying, you know what, that's something I can do, and they wanted right. to get a hold of you, how could they do that? Well, we have, we have offices in, throughout New York, mm -hmm. you know, and, and extended areas. For example, we have an office at New Windsor near West Point. We have one in North Jersey. We have an office in Brooklyn, and my office is in Manhattan okay. in the FBI building. Nice. So, and yeah. how, how would they find you guys? Well, um, we have go. You have GoArmy.com. You can find us on GoArmy.com. Mm -hmm. um, we also on LinkedIn. We have Facebook. We're all we're all social. We're all we're out there. Did they Google you and find out where your office is? Yes, they can. Yes, so they just can. put AMED Recruiting New York City, New York City, and, and they'll find you. They'll find me. Your number's on there too. My number, my email address, everything is on there. Nice. Well, we'll make sure that gets out because that's some good information to have. Absolutely. And I'd love to thank you to coming on the show and putting out this great education to all of our viewers because I'm sure somebody's watching and saying, I can do that. Yeah, appreciate it. Anytime. Appreciate you having me. Anytime. And thank you guys for joining in. And until next time, make sure you thank a veteran.